welcome and a welcome back to my channel. My name is Nate Penda. And in today's video, I'm going to be spilling all of the information, spilling all of the tea that I have been getting asked about when it comes to influencing, content creating, being full-time. There's been so many questions I've gotten via DMs, from texts, from friends. Um, so I just wanted to compile my top nine or top 10 most asked questions really tailor it to my specific journey as well um so that you guys can see a side of influencing that a lot of people don't tell you um some real information from a real person so if you are interested and you want to know if it's still possible to be an influencer in 2021 make sure you go ahead and keep on watching give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel also if you're not an influencer and you're just curious about what it is that i do in my line of work definitely watch this video it will be super helpful um it's a little girl chat okay all right let's go ahead and get into it so I was actually supposed to be doing my makeup as I answered these questions, but I ended up going live on Instagram instead. So I apologize if you're someone that likes to see something happening or see makeup happening as you're watching. This is going to be more of like a QA. and a um, I definitely will be doing some videos in the future where I just talk about influencing or talk about what I do, um, where I'll be doing my makeup as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, so the first question that I have is how did I become an influencer? And to be quite honest with you, me becoming an influencer was a complete accident. I genuinely feel like a huge component of like where I am and in me influencing has to deal with just God and what God saw for me and what God wanted for me. I was a teacher for three and a half years. Those of you that have been here for a while know that. Those of y'all that watch my beauty reviews or my beauty tutorials can always pick up on the fact that I'm a teacher because of how I teach or how I go into detail when it comes to me doing my look. But I was a teacher for three and a half years and i was in marketing for nine months as well so if you're watching this and you're an influencer i do have background from the brand side as well as now from the influencer side and to be quite honest with y'all when i first started my blog nate penda i started on instagram first and i started out as a makeup artist like literally i was just trying to do makeup on other people i literally did not want to be behind the camera i wanted to take pictures of other people put up my work and post it um, and I feel like that was like a cover up for what I really wanted to do. I was super insecure. I wasn't sure if there was space for me on the internet. I didn't see anyone who looked like me, who was plus size, black, Muslim, dark skin. Like I didn't see anyone that was me, that looks like me. And so to me at first, I was just like, that means it's not for uses. Um, but what ended up happening is I just wasn't getting enough clients, but I still wanted to grow my page. I still wanted to grow my brand. So I was like, you know what, if I'm not getting clients, I have to do the makeup on myself, show other people so that I can then get booked. Y'all, I probably took clients for like a month or two. And from there, it was literally me doing makeup on myself. So I invested almost $3,000 into a kit that I ended up not even really using, um, because I became the brand versus becoming the makeup artist. Um, question two is how I grew slash tips to grow on Instagram or on YouTube. So I took down some notes. So if you see me looking, it's because I'm literally looking at my notes to make sure that I don't forget anything. So the first thing that I did was to get specific about your niche. I say niche, some people say niche. Um, but to me, I'm going to say get specific about your niche, your niche slash your community. For me, I know who I am. And so because I'm so sure of who I am, I know who I want my community to be. I know who I want to attract. I am someone that loves beauty. So my content is going to always first speak to beauty. It's always first going to speak to makeup. I love fashion, right? I've never been that person that really knew how to dress. I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. Like, I just just learned how to really, like, get my style on 100, which is why I'm super excited to get into plus size hauls that you guys will see coming up. Um... So I love fashion. I love just like vulnerability and transparency. I'm in a phase of my life where I call like the transition phase, meaning like I'm transitioning to the next level spiritually, emotionally, mentally, my relationship with God, my relationship with my health, my relationship with my family, friends, all of that. And so that is going to naturally be shown within my content. Um, and so those are the three buckets that I really focus on. So that's really just like beauty, fashion, and transparency slash like grace slash real life lifestyle you know what i mean and so because i'm so specific about who i am i'm always talking to my community and from there i feel like i attract people who are interested in what it is that i have to share i think that the mistake that a lot of people make and then the mistake that i even made when i first got started as a makeup artist i had something called like makeup mondays um wild card wednesday uh i have so many different days and it's just like 
I wasn't specific about what I was sharing. I was just sharing everything. Like people want to see themselves within your content or there has to be something that draws people in. And if you have literally a little bit of everything on there, I feel like people can get confused and they'll like a picture, they might stop by your page, but there's no reason necessarily for them to stay. So I think that's really important to draw in your community by being specific in who you are. Um, for sure, I also go, grew from getting reposted on pages. If you don't, you should definitely be following Content and Combos on Instagram. It is a community that was started by my friend Mimi, myself, and my friend Marissa. Um, and honestly, we share so many tips and tricks as people who work on the brand side, um, as far as, you know, getting brand deals, setting up your page for success, as well as just like this question of, you know, growing. And so getting reposted, there was strategy that went behind it. Um, I've been reposted by some of my favorite brands and anytime I've gone in with content not just to share to my community but also with the idea of okay I hope they repost this because I do want a relationship with this brand because I actually love the products I always went into it with strategy and it always worked for me so the tips I can say for that is look at their feed look at the brand's feed see the type of content that they post and try to mimic that you know what I mean also see like when you're creating your content if you know that you want to get reposted by Fenty don't post the video that has Fenty and Mac and Becca and all of these brands because those are their competitors. So it's going to be more difficult for them to be posted because no brand want to give another brand shine. They want it to be all about them. So if your goal is to get reposted or if you want to get reposted by a brand in particular, definitely make sure that you are creating content that focuses on them and that could easily fall into their feed. Another thing that helped me was getting reposted by a literal like repost page. I've been reposted by Dark Skin Woman. Um, and with that, it's just make sure you tag them. Make sure again that your content is high quality. So I'll definitely say like getting reposted by a lot of different pages really, really helps me. And I think also because I'm so specific on who my community is, my community also shares my content. And from them sharing me to their friends and their family members, I'm also found through that way. Um, definitely by providing value, I feel like whenever I post, I always ask myself, like, what do I want someone to take from this? Is it about a foundation? Is it about a moment in life that I'm going through right now that maybe they can relate to? Is it about, you know, this piece of clothing that I figured out a way to style to make it work for the way that I want to look? You know what I mean? Like, what value am I providing? And by consistently providing valuable content and shareable content, you continue to grow because people see it and they want to share it with other people. Um, definitely another way to grow is with hashtags. Um, be very particular and very specific in your hashtags. There's a few strategies and a few things that you can look into when it comes to using your hashtags. I will tag some people down below who I think you should follow. In my description bar today, you're going to see tons of resources um, in regards to like people that you should follow when it comes to you being a content creator if you're trying to go that route. Um, and so having a hashtag strategy is super important for me. I max out my hashtags. I know people say like, oh, if you got 30 hashtags, you look thirsty. Well, <laughs> okay, I max out my hashtags. I use all 30 and I typically use hashtags of page that can repost me, like repostable pages. Sorry, y'all. Brand pages um, that can repost my content and then community specific um, pages. If you want more detail about that, definitely just message me on Instagram. I have no problem answering you. And honestly, the part that I feel like no one mentions and it's something that my friend Mimi talked to me about is just luck. Like sometimes growing is genuinely just luck. It's, it's just luck. Um, and even maybe beyond luck is just God. God being on your side, this being your purpose, this being what you're supposed to do. And therefore everything in the universe just working for that to happen. Um, another question or question three is my thoughts on consistency slash how often to post. I say cadence over consistency. Um, I literally wrote it down. Let me actually go grab it. Give me a second. Okay, so I actually wrote it down. Um, I didn't post. In 2020, I posted once in January, seven times in February, six times in March. And it goes on and on in that same rhythm. I got consistent in November where I posted 12 times in December and 14 times. My goal is to get to the point where I'm posting 20 to 25 times a month. But I say that to say that consistency was not where I won. Where I won was with my cadence. Where I won was with my value. Where I won was with the type of content that I created for my community. Where I won was with being shareable. You know what I mean? So 
for me, my cadence was whenever I post it, I'm bringing something to the platform. I'm bringing something to my community that, that that's going to resonate with them. And as a result of that, growth happened. Um, and so I think that a lot of the times, you know, consistency is so pushed, but it's not always about the quantity. A lot of the times, 90% of, of the times, it's about the quality. It's about what you are bringing to your community. So I definitely think that going into 2021, if you are an influencer or aspiring to be, aspiring to be an influencer, don't work so hard on being consistent all the time. Consistency is a huge part of it because the more consistent you are, the more successful you will be. But put more emphasis on your cadence. What are you sharing? What are the types of content you're introducing to your community and get used to that? Um, okay. Question four is, what was my biggest mistake as an influencer? <clears throat> So that could be a whole video within itself because I feel like I've made tons and tons and tons of mistakes. I'm going to give you a few. So the first one was signing contracts without knowing what was in there. I did not know what in perpetuity was. That basically means forever. Okay. A brand could use your content forever. Y'all seen that commercial with Cardi B where she's talking about the toys or whatever? As big as she is, as renowned as she is, she probably signed a contract that said that that brand, that company had the ability to use her, her voice, her likeness in perpetuity, meaning forever or for 10 years or whatever the case may be. Um, and that is my biggest mistake. And I don't ever want to sign on perpetuity unless I'm being paid for it. If you want my content forever, you need to pay forever money. Um, so I definitely always negotiate that out of my contract. But for sure, one of my biggest mistakes was signing contracts without really understanding what every term meant. Um, another thing is signing contracts uh, without knowing about usage and exclusivity. Um, the best way to explain usage is how long they get to use your content. Exclusivity is how long you have to only use that brand's product or only speak about that brand without talking about any of their competitors. And the reality is that if they're using your content, using your face, it could potentially take other brands away from wanting to work with you because you're now connected to another brand. And with exclusivity, if you can only work with one brand that's taken away from the opportunities you have to work with others, all of that to say, like, you should be charging for those two things because it's there's value behind it. You, you're essentially losing out or potentially losing out on money. Um, and so you should charge according to that. Um, and then the last one would just be uh, knowing your value. And when I say knowing your value, I feel like for me, um, in the beginning, I think I looked at working with brands with, oh my God, this brand wants to work with me. And I think I'm starting to get to the point where it's just like, no, I know who I am. I know the type of content that I can create. I know who my audience is. I know what my audience wants to see. And therefore, if a brand comes to me, it's a partnership. I'm not doing them a favor. They're not doing me a favor. We are in a partnership because we are going to both benefit each other, hopefully, in the best types of um, working situations, in the best type of collaborations. It is a partnership because I will bring value to them just as much as they will bring value to me. And I think it's super important to just recognize that. I think as influencers sometimes, um, it's very easy to, to give the brand the power when it's just like, for me, my power is with my audience. My power is with my community. My power is with the women, the men who follow me because I inspire them. I, I show them something, you know what I mean? And in those who trust me. And so I don't want to take that lightly. So that is where my power is. It's with my audience. And therefore, when a brand comes to me and they're coming to work with me and they're coming to talk to my audience through me, it's a partnership because you have to benefit me. And through benefiting me, it has to also benefit my audience. I hope that makes sense. Um, the next question or question five is, how did I figure out my rate? So, okay, two things. One, when I first got started, I looked at this app called Social Blue Book. And Social Blue Book basically gives you a price point from the lowest amount you should take to the highest amount you should take. I no longer use Social Blue Book because they charge us $20 a month. And I'm not paying it. So I've been in a few influencer groups. I've spoken to a few influencers, also for me just being on the brand side. Um, a good starting point, now this is not set in stone, but a good starting point is to charge 4% of your audience. So if you have 20,000 followers, whatever 4% of that is, that is your starting point. To me, I always say start there, but add tax. Because that is your starting point, but add for your production, your editing time, 
Um, if it's a brand where it's just like working with them could potentially stop you from working with another brand, if there's usage, if there's exclusivity, all of those things then go into it. But a good starting point when it comes to how much you should charge for a post is 4% of your audience. And when it comes to how much you should charge for stories, 2% of your audience. Um, and when it comes to YouTube, it's a bit different. It's more by CPM. Um, these are all technical terms. Again, follow Content and Convos for more information in regards to like all of those nitty gritty details. I want to talk more about like my journey, help y'all out, um, and just give y'all the overall like review or the overall, the big picture of it all. Um, but for sure, when it comes to Instagram at least, I know for a fact 4% of your audience is a great starting point. Um, question six is... How did you know you wanted to go full time? So if I'm being honest with y'all, a lot of people when they say they go full time, they're like, oh, I save six months of savings. I make sure I have all of my ducks in a row. Y'all, I was just tired. I was tired of working for other people. I was tired of not walking within my purpose. I was tired of knowing that there was so much within me that I could give that I wasn't giving. I was tired of not doing it. You know what I mean? I was miserable. And when I say I was miserable, it wasn't because I hated my job, because working in beauty was a dream come true for me. Um, it was mainly that I was spending 10 hours, 11 hours, 12 hours working for a beauty brand that I loved, but working for a beauty brand, not doing what I needed to do for myself, for my content. I thought that when I quit teaching, I would have so much more time to pour into my content as a consultant, because I'm like, oh, I'm just a consultant. Like, it'll work like this. Long story short, it did not end up working like that. Um, if I knew then what I know now, things would have been different, but, um, I was working double the hours I worked as a teacher, like so long and I was so drained. Like when it came to me having to film for myself, I didn't want to do it. When it came to me having to take pictures, I didn't want to do it. And so I was tired and from me being tired, I was just like, something has to give, I have to go. Like, this is not what I'm supposed to do. And I genuinely think God made me so uncomfortable that I had no choice but to move because income wise, I only got a few deals. My deals didn't really start coming in until like July. And I quit my job. Like I quit working with a beauty brand in July. And August was my first time going full time. So I genuinely think God told me it was time because he made me so uncomfortable that I had no choice but to leave. Um, and I just had faith. I knew that I could do it. I knew that worst comes to worst. I have my degree. I have my master's in education. I could always go back to teaching. There's always you know, a demand for teachers, I could do tutoring. Worst comes to worst, I can figure something else. But till this day, I'm walking through faith. I'm not, it, it, I'm not walking with, you know, having anything set in stone. I'm walking with God got me and I promise y'all, ever since I just like let him have it and I just stopped myself from the fear of being full-time, I stopped myself from saying, oh, I don't wanna tell people I'm a full-time influencer because there was a stigma in my mind about that. Um, ever since I pushed all of that to the side and I literally just let my, my true feelings of this is what I'm passionate about, about creating, about my community, about beauty, about fashion, like this is what I love, this is literally, like I can't explain why I love it, it just, it is what it is, that's because that's, it's my purpose, it's what I'm put here to do, I'm here to inspire other people through my content and in me doing that I just knew it's time, you know what I mean? And so to all of those people that are trying to figure out, you know, should you go full time, and I used to ask people this question. Don't look for the answer to that question from others. I cannot tell you if you should go full time. I'm a human. Someone else's story cannot tell you to go full time. You have to ask yourself, is that what you truly are meant to do? Is that what is that what God has put on your heart? You know what I mean? Is all that you eat, breathe, and sleep this thing? Um, is everything in your life aligned? for this to happen. You know what I mean? Look for those answers of what you should do within yourself. This is a cool video to watch because it's almost like a testimony that is possible. Use the idea of this being a possibility to fuel you to figure out if it's what's best for you. But don't follow anyone else's path. And that is a huge mistake that I made. I guess I can include that in my huge mistakes is I looked to so many other influencers and kept asking them, oh my gosh, when did you know it was time to go full time? Because I almost wanted them to give me an answer for me to be like, oh, this is God's sign to me that I should go full time. And there was nothing that they said that could have moved me um, because they weren't God. Question seven is what to avoid as an influencer. 
So the first thing I'm going to say is getting caught up in engagement and in growth. I know it's so hard. Y'all probably be like, what you mean? You, you just talked about how you grew on Instagram, how you grew, and now you want to tell us, don't focus on growth and don't focus on engagement. I know so many creators who are so dope that put so much emphasis on growing and on engagement that it discourages them from creating. And the way I'm looking at it, especially now, is my platform is at this point beyond just me. You know what I mean? Like your platforms as creators, as people who want to be influencers, it's not about just you. It's about you, but it's also about your audience and you need to show up for your audience. If your audience doesn't engage, if they're not, you know, liking specific content, ask them, hey, what do you want to see? What are you looking for? We know that the algorithm is the algorithm, um, but everything isn't always the algorithm. Ask yourself, are you creating content that is truly servicing what it is that you have created your platform for or are you just posting to post you know what i mean and so from you really thinking of your audience first and figuring out how you can cater to them um focus less on the numbers and more on the quality of what's happening like what do y'all want to see what should i put out there and then beyond that if there's things that you genuinely just want to put out because there's a different audience you want to attract just keep posting it. If the followers aren't there at first, be consistent in your cadence. Be consistent in your value. Be consistent in what it is that you're bringing to the platform and all of the numbers, everything that you're looking for will come. Um, I definitely will also say don't get too caught up in growth to the point where you're buying fake followers or you're buying fake likes or, you know, you're putting out content that you see is popular versus content that is, you know, content that, that resonates with you and that content that is true to you. Because you get lost in the sauce when you do that. Focus on what is what is your value and what are you sharing. And then from there, I promise you, the numbers will eventually come. It just takes time. And anytime I get caught up myself, because I'm not perfect, there's times where I'm like, dang, this picture didn't hit as much as I thought it was going to hit. And then I remember, every picture isn't going to hit. I remember, this picture is going to help someone. This picture is going to be a reference for someone. And then anytime I get to the point where I'm like, should I continue doing this? I think to myself... Jackie's been in the game for 10 years and it wasn't until the 8th or the 9th or the 7th it wasn't until a huge chunk of time that she really 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 reached her peak and I feel like her peak is still is still growing you know what I mean and so in me remembering that I tell myself like you better not give up don't you dare give up don't you dare allow numbers or growing to get you to the point where you feel like you shouldn't be here you know what i mean so that's a huge mistake to avoid is focusing on the numbers focus on your value first um another thing i would say to avoid as an influencer is being an opportunist um i have encountered this where there are people um who when i was smaller paid me dust um and when i say paid me dust and this not just being an opportunist but also just be a good person you know what i mean don't only don't only try to connect with people or support people based on what you think you can get out of it um because today you could be at the top and tomorrow it could be someone else you know what i mean like that's just how life works that's just how god works and so i feel like when i say don't be an opportunist i say that to say like you know to me i follow people that are bigger than me i follow people that are on the same level as me i follow people that have smaller numbers than me i follow people based on value not based on their numbers and as a result of that i love just connecting with other creators and i love connecting with my audience it's even people who support me so much i have no choice but to follow them because it's just like you show me so much love at this point we friends we sisters you know what i mean you're not a you you my family um and so what i don't want is for you as a content creator to look at other creators who are bigger than you only and only want to network up like Issa Rae said, network across, network within your community, network down, network up, network in between. You know what I mean? Network with people based on their value and what you can bring to them and what they can bring to you so that it's a relationship versus having your eyes so wide open for what other people can do for you. Because ultimately, it's, it's very apparent. It's very obvious. And like I said, I've met people who paid me dust when I was smaller, who did some shady things. You know what I mean? Like... I've had some shady experiences, especially because I'm a plus size dark skinned black woman. So I feel like off of just first glance, a lot of people pay me dust because that's just how society treats dark skinned black women. Like we, we already know that. Um, but some of those same people now um, are giving me attention and it's very clear on why. You know what I mean? Um, next is 
this idea of getting scammed. Uh, okay, so influencers, content creators, those who want to be influencers, those who want to be content creators full time, don't get scammed, don't get got. We are in a time where I feel like everyone knows that so many people want to be influencers. And as a result of that, people are coming out with courses, people are coming out with ebooks, people are coming out with workshops, people are coming out with so many different ways in which to help influencers, right? But the question to me is, are the people that are helping you, are they, are they who you are trying to aspire to be, if that makes sense? Because there are people who have followers. It doesn't necessarily mean that their followers are engaged with them. It doesn't mean that they have a strong community. It doesn't mean that they are professional. It doesn't mean that they're bringing value. It doesn't mean that, you know, they are working with brands or are able to make an income from this. So you have to ask yourself, when you are looking to become a content creator or an influencer, what are you trying to get from it? If you're just trying to build a community, who does that best? Look for resources from them. If you're trying to get partnerships, who do you see working with brands? Get resources from them. But everyone's position and everyone's, um, what everyone can bring to you is going to be different, right? And so for me, when it comes to who I follow, who I get resources from, I know what I want. I know who I want to be, the type of creator that I want to be, and therefore I'm going to get the resources from them. But you got to be doing the work. Um, and there's a lot of people who aren't doing the work, but who are putting out their courses and their ebooks and all of these things because they just want you to buy. You're just money to them. You know what I mean? You're not an actual person who has these hopes and these dreams of someday being where they are or where you think they are. To them, you're just you're just someone they can sell to. You know what I mean? And I don't want to discredit ebooks and workshops because I've invested in some amazing ebooks from Monroe Steele, from Simply Shanna. I've invested in uh the Influencer League, you know what I mean? I've invested in Brittany Hennessy. There's a lot of people in this space who I have invested in because I wanted to become better as a content creator. I wanted to become better as an influencer. I wanted to learn more. And so I bought their products and I do not regret it at all. I absolutely think it was worth it. And I might even come out with my own ebook or my own information, you know what I mean? Um, but there are definitely people in this space who are taking advantage of people wanting to become influencers and content creators and they're putting out stuff that isn't really going to help you or they're putting out stuff where it's just like they're telling you this but they haven't done it themselves to know what the results could be right and so i always tell everyone don't listen to anyone that tells you if you follow these steps you will a thousand percent have this because the reality is you don't know they're not god they can give you the blueprint they can give you the foundation but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen for you in that way or as fast as they're telling you it will happen. So just be cautious, okay? Be cautious. Being an influencer is the thing to be. Um, and I think there's space for everyone. You know what I mean? I think it's definitely possible, but be careful because with that, we have definitely people who are trying to prey on people's want to be an influencer. And I don't want anyone to lose money or to get caught up in a scam and feel like they wasted their money and wasted their resources and didn't get anything from it. So just be careful. This scam is going to scam, child, okay? And the last thing is, um, know how to handle rejection. <sighs> know how to handle rejection. Everything is not going to be a yes. And I, I almost, I'm screaming because I have a personal experience with this where I legit lost a friend off of something that has to deal with this where, you know, know how to handle rejection, okay? Every brand that you want to work with, they're not going to say yes. Every person that you want to collaborate with, they're not going to say yes. Every follower that you want to engage with you or that you want to buy a product from you or do a swipe up, they're not going to do it. So you have to know how to deal with not getting the results that you want. They, even me, I get rejected and I take those rejections as a, it's not a no, it's a not right now. A few of my partnerships that have been the most um, successful that have brought me the most revenue. We started with me reaching out to them and saying, hey, I would love to work with you, either getting left on red, being told there was no opportunities, being told no, straight up, being ignored, all, all of the above. Anything you can consider a rejection, it started off as that, but you know what I did? I kept going, I kept posting, I kept sharing, because even if the brand didn't wanna work with me, I found value in the products and I knew that my audience would enjoy it. I know that it would service my audience. I, as a dark skin plus creator, if there's a product that works for me, I'm gonna share that because I know that there's someone who might be looking for something like that for them. So a brand not wanting me to pay for it, or a brand not wanting to pay me for it, or not wanting to send it to me for free, 
that's like a negative like dang but at the end of the day if it works for me and i love it and i know that it will help my audience i'm going to continue sharing it right and so in me continuing to share it in me being genuine in my approach in me continuing to you know just do the work and me continuing to share and not taking that no as a well f this brand or i'm not going to do this anymore is giving me some of the most fruitful opportunities you know what i mean it's also humbled me it's taught me that no matter what stage you are there's always going to be brands that just are not aligned with you you know what i mean like it's just life so as a content creator as an influencer the biggest mistake you can make is assuming that everything will be a yes or taking a no as um as a sign of disrespect or taking a no as you know a brand trying to make you feel smaller than it's not that those no's are nine times out of ten are not right now and i can go i have like a whole testimony i can go into of all of the ways in which i either got no or i was ignored and then as soon as i hit 10k or as soon as i shared it the third time was as soon as i shared it the fifth time or as soon as i provided a swipe up link for the product organically in my stories the brand reached out you never know people are watching your audience needs you your audience needs your content so if you reach out to a brand and they say no don't take offense to it take the rejection and move on how do you take that rejection by saying it's a not right now that's it they don't answer you follow up in three weeks follow up in three months follow up in six months follow up in nine months keep doing the work keep growing keep increasing your quality keep increasing your output Keep doing the work. Keep servicing your audience. They're going to have no choice but to say yes down the line. And if it's still a no, that's okay. It's just not aligned. It's not for you. There will be another brand that is for you, okay? Learn how to accept rejection. Um, and then the last question that I want to answer is, can anyone be an influencer? And this connects to um, what I asked earlier as far as, you know, so many people wanting to be influencers. Um, and all of the courses and all of the resources that are now available, almost so many, right? Um, I think everyone can be an influencer. I think it's possible. I think that the real question to me is, um, what type of influencer do you want to be? What value do you want to, do you want to bring? Who is your core audience? Who are you trying to attract? Um, what is your cadence going to look like? You know, what is your value proposition? And these are all things that we touch on as well in content and convos. So definitely, again, follow us there. I'm going to keep plugging it just because these are conversations we have so much. I am so passionate about influencers, about content creation. Like, it's, it's something that truly brings me joy to talk about. I'm a constant learner, a constant student of the game when it comes to what I am currently doing right now full time. Because there's so much room, so much space, so much opportunity so much money if i'm being honest in this industry but beyond that there's so much passion that i have because i love that i'm able to walk within my purpose by sharing who i am and like also attracting my audience in that way and then being able to work with brands who i love and naturally share like all of that is just like a full circle moment to me like i never thought that someone like me who was going into the next store buying their products could then partner with next and then share this with my audience and be like y'all we got a foundation at seven dollars you know what i mean like it's it's crazy to wrap my head around um so it's definitely possible i think anyone can be an influencer as long as it is within their purpose is what god wanted for them you're able to do the work you want to do the work you find the right resources you focus on your audience and not the brands the audience will come the brand will come because the brand wants you and they want your audience so if you are focusing only on the brand you're neglecting who the brand actually wants which is your audience okay um so it's definitely possible if you do those things i also think that um there's another question of is it too late to be an influencer in 2021 and the answer is absolutely not I think the biggest thing is it's harder to grow in 2021 than it was in 2014 and in 2015, which is why I don't think influencers now, you should not compare your journey to influencers who started when Instagram first started. You should not compare your journey to influencers who grew 60K or 80K of their followers in 2014 and are now at 100k because the same way it's taking us a longer time to grow it's taking them a longer time to grow as well it's just that they had that leg up from when they got started right so it's more difficult to grow in 2021 but if you are providing value providing shareable content engaging with your audience giving them what they want to see creating quality content like 
if you're doing all of those things, the growth is going to happen because people are always looking for others to follow. No one just follows or I don't want to say no one, but most people don't just follow one person. They follow a multitude of people. So there's definitely space. If there's space for Jackie and Mima and Alyssa and Ohima and me and Shayla and all of these people, why is there not space for you? There's space for us all. It's just a matter of how are you going to show up for your audience? You know what I mean? Um, so I hope that this was helpful. This video is definitely different from the type of content that I put on my YouTube before. I feel like most of my content is catering to my audience, which is people who love beauty, who um, are into plus size fashion, who have been begging me to put out that content, which is coming soon. But also I recognize that I have a lot of people who follow me that are also content creators. And so I want to nurture y'all as well and not leave y'all hanging here because, you know, I love y'all too. Um, if there's any questions that I didn't answer, definitely leave it down below in the comment section. I feel like I have my notes, but as I'm speaking, I'm just like, this topic is so big that this is like 15 videos. You know what I mean? Like this isn't just one thing. So if there's anything in particular that you want me to go in detail about or anything in particular you have questions about, definitely leave it in the comment section down below. I hope that there was some value you were able to take from this. I hope that if you are someone that wants to be a content creator, you are looking at this and telling yourself, okay, I need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what am I sharing with my community? Who am I attracting? Who is my tribe? Really figure out, you know what I mean? What, you, what, what you're bringing to the table. It can't just be a cute flick, okay? We love the cute pictures, but we need more than that. We need substance. We need, we need, we need it, okay? We want it. That's that's what people want. They want substance. They want someone who makes them feel something when they see their content. So definitely know that it's possible for you in 2021 to be an influencer. It's possible to go full time as an influencer without having 50k or 100,000 followers. I always thought you needed to have 100,000 or 200,000. I went full time at like 20k, y'all. So. You don't need that many followers to go um, full-time as an influencer. You really just need to be super specific in who you are and the value you bring um, because that will be evident. So, yeah, I hope this was helpful. Again, leave all your comments in the comment section down below. I will be back on Sunday with another video. If you are new here, I do post on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, so make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Give this video a big thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram and DM me if you have any questions that you don't want to write here on YouTube. I love y'all so much, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.